every six months, the same spectacle happens. A new version of Fedora is released. So let's have a look at it. Hi, this is Carson with OpenTech. And while you're here, don't forget to like, to subscribe and to hit the notification bell since it helps. And now let's talk about Fedora 36 and let's find out what's new and how it feels. Let's get into it. The first thing we want to do when trying out a new version of an operating system is to install it, right? So I downloaded Fedora 36 Peter and after having done that, I created a virtual machine with four gigabytes of RAM, four processor cores, and 40 gigabytes of storage. And we will use that virtual machine now to install Fedora 36. So I inserted the media and now I'm booting the live image of Fedora 36. That takes just a few seconds and after the image has been loaded I will start the installer by hitting install to hard drive. For whatever reason I need to change my systems language now so I change it from German to English and then we continue. We confirm that we want to install pre-release software and we check the installation destination. We install it to our virtual hard disk here. We hit begin installation and now the installation starts. Great thing about Fedora 36 is that it installs ButterFS as primary file system. I truly love that. Once the installation is done, we hit finish installation and now all we have to do is to reboot the system to boot into the newly installed Fedora installation. Awesome! When you look back at the installation process, you might have noticed that we've not entered any kind of user or passwords or whatever. With Fedora, that is done after the installation in the initial configuration steps. So let's do that now. We are greeted with the desktop and here the setup screen appears. First of all, we have to decide whether we want to have location services and automatic problem reporting activated. I don't like that. Then we can enable or disable third party repositories, which makes a lot of sense. You can optionally create and connect your online accounts and then you have to enter your username and your password. Once you have done that, your system is initially set up. Awesome! After having installed and initialized the system properly, we can do the actual customization. So on the desktop, when we press the super key, we are offered to take the tour of GNOME 42, which we happily do. So the tour just introduces you to what is new with GNOME 42 and how to work with it. Use the super key to get an overview, search in the overview screen. You can work with workspaces. You can do three finger gestures for overview as well as workspace switching. Perfect. I guess we understood it. Now let's hit the super key and open the settings app. Here in the settings app, we will focus on the appearance section. So hit the entry and then you can switch the theme 
into a truly dark theme, which I truly love. And you can also change the wallpaper. I fell in love with that black and white wallpaper here. You can adjust the display resolution. You can obviously look into your default applications, changing it and so on and so forth. And in the About section, you can change the name of your machine. I changed mine to be Fedora minus VM. I hit rename and the machine is now renamed. Perfect. And if you look a bit more in the About section, you can see that we are running GNOME 42 on the Wayland desktop. Fine. Before now being able to actually work with the system, let's install the system updates. There are two ways to do that. We do that here via console by entering sudo dnf check minus update, and then the system loads the available updates. The other option would be using the software center, but that is a bit unreliable to my experience. So we go with the console option here, takes a few minutes and then you can run sudo dnf update and that update then again after if you've confirmed it takes another few minutes so probably grab a cup of coffee or tea and enjoy yourself for a few minutes <sighs> once the installation has finished all we need to do is to reboot the system. So we enter sudo reboot, probably confirm it with our user's password, and then the system will restart. One of the areas where you might notice a difference coming from older versions is the workspace management. GNOME has introduced a new and different approach to workspace management with the GNOME 40 series. So let's try to get a handle on that. What I do now is I open Firefox and then I will open LibreOffice Writer. I installed LibreOffice previously and once LibreOffice is there, I will just use the super key to get into the overview view and then drag it over to a different workspace. Notice that the second workspace and even third workspace have been created automatically and you can easily switch between those workspaces. Now we will open the text editor on the third workspace and then we can use super up and super down to switch between the workspaces or we use the overview view or alternatively use the three finger horizontal gesture to switch between the workspaces. It's quite simple and it's quite straightforward once you got used to it. Another section of where you might notice the difference to previous GNOME versions is the screenshot tool. This tool has been completely revamped with GNOME 42 and as you will see it is more like a complete overhaul. So when we want to take a screenshot we open the overview and search for a screenshot and then we just position the tool and then we hit the capture button and then the screenshot is available from the clipboard. You can either save it or just paste it wherever you like it. Quite neat. Another application that has been changed or actually has been exchanged is the text editor. Fedora now ships with a completely new text editor which is named Text Editor. Great naming, on the point. This new text editor allows you to obviously take notes. 
You can then change the appearance of the text editor. And if you look closely, you will also see that the text editor now supports Markdown code. So what I do now is I add a first order headline and a second order headline. And I also add an indentation, or to be more precisely, I add a bullet. And to make sure that we actually get the color coding, we have to save our document and give it the .md extension. Once we have done that, we will see the color coding and we can enjoy the new text editor to its full glory. One of the things you need to do as quite a nerdy Linux user is to run NeoFetch, right? So let's do that. To run NeoFetch, we open the terminal and enter NeoFetch. The package is not yet installed, so Fedora supports us in installing it. And once the installation is done, we can see that we are running Fedora 36 with GNOME 42 on a Ryzen 5 system. Nice. The resource utilization is one of the things that you should worry about when installing a Linux operating system or to be more precise, any operating system. So let's find out about the initial resource utilization of Fedora 36 by rebooting the machine and then by running htop. Once we have rebooted we log into the system and now we run the HTOP utility. As you can see, the system just runs with 924 to 925 megabytes of RAM and the CPU utilization is quite minimal. Looks great to me. So what do you make out of that? Is Fedora 36 your kind of Linux distribution? I'm personally quite impressed with this release, specifically when comparing it to the previous version, Fedora 35, which to me felt like quite a mess. It was glitchy, it was not snappy, it did not feel good. This one feels way better. So I can personally imagine running it. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And while you are there, don't forget to like, to subscribe and to hit the notification bell, since it helps. Thanks for watching, see you next time. And don't forget, let's make the world a better place now more than ever. Thanks for dropping by, see you later. Bye.